which Alan de Botton's book should you read first, which one I would skip, and which books, even according to the author, or if we could take hints from his website, he isn't very proud of and you should totally skip. In this video, you will find them. We will be talking about the books chronologically, and I will tell you the three books that I think are the must reads. Then I, because like I made, uh, uh, it's, it's the case with me, I like to do tire rankings, so I make a tire ranking list. The first category is adding to cart, the second category is hesitant about adding to cart, and the third category is wait for me, because I actually want to read all of Alain de Botton's book, because I think Alain de Botton is one of the best writers there is, uh, and contemporary philosopher who makes the philosophy for us easy to understand and read. We will start with his very first book, and that's Essays in Love. He wrote the book in 1933, and it has 249 pages. And let's just check together how old he was when he started writing. He was born in 1969, which, by the way, nice year to, <laughs> to be born in... No, 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 like, let's stay... <laughs> <laughs> Let's stay focused on, on the task. Yeah, so he was born in in that year <laughs> and he, he wrote his first book in 1933. I graduated from economics, so <laughs> this one should be uh, easy math. So he was 36. Yeah, he was 36. Yeah, he was 36 when he started writing. I think that's like a really good age to start writing because like you've seen some of the world, right? So and you, you are wise, I guess, enough. To, to 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 write. So he wrote it when he, when he, so he started writing when he was nine when he was nineteen thirty six when he was thirty six. An essays in love is about two young people who met on an airplane between London and Paris and rapidly fall in love. So this book is going to automatically adding to cart because uh, first of all I've already <laughs> added to cart because I've already bought the book. It's a blend of novel and non-fiction. There are characters and realistic setting but they are blend with the, these abstract ideas. And let me read you what the book is about. Essays in love it appeal to anyone who has ever been in a relationship or confused about love. So that probably means like everyone. Uh, the book charts the progress of relationship between men and women from their first kiss to the onset of anxiety and heartbreak. And the book explores all the emotions that we can, can feel during love and it's just like, I love this book. So, so this basically means this book really is for everyone. It explores the love and the relationship and like, I highly recommend it. There is like one book I liked more and we will cover it on the topic of love as well. But like so far, like very, very good book. The second book he has written in is called The Romantic Movement, Sex, Shopping and Novel. The book has 336 pages and he written it in, 19, in the year 1994, which by the way is a very good year, <laughs> they say. Uh, I, I mean like a lot of good things like came out on that year. <laughs> I'm sorry for this joke. Um, yeah, uh, I was born in 1994 if you didn't get that. So, uh, for some reason this book isn't on his official website. Is he not proud of this novel? Is it not coherent with his life advice and philosopher vibe? We will never know. But now I'm even more intrigued to know what the book is actually about. In the romantic movement, Alain de Botton explores the progress of a love affair from first meeting to breaking up intercuts with musing on the nature of love. And it's actually like very similar, I think, for with the essays in love and the, the another book I will talk about more later and there's like the girl Sasha that compared these two, two books and basically like what she is saying is that the one is like more developed than the other that the author was probably like still in the beginning so I think he was just like trying to find his you know like his style of writing um, she said that the, the writing isn't it that it seems a bit cold in this one in this book so I think there are like better books uh, to, to read than this one, but still, like, I will put it in wait for me because I would like to read it. And by the way, I'm always looking into my phone because I have the notes for this video here. Another book is Kisentel, and he wrote it in 1995. And the writing on the on this book isn't very good, but, and a lot of people didn't really read read it. I think so. It's probably like one of his like less famous books. And um, the main protagonist is uh, accused from his ex-girlfriend for being unable to empathize. Empathize, empathize, <laughs> empathize. For, for being unable to empathize, the main protagonist decided in the bookshop that he will write a book um, about the first person he will see 
because uh, you know like writing a um, biography of someone is like is one of the most unselfish and empathetic uh, thing you can do so he decides to write a book and uh, and he decided to write a book about Isa Isabel a production assistant who seems to be apparently a regular woman but as the biographer's understanding of Isabel deepens, she becomes remarkable. Her smallest quirks, private habits and opinions becomes worthy of the most painstaking investigation and unexpectedly attractive to her biography. So I think it's like the, the, the overall message of this book is like that we all matter and we are all beautiful, which uh, I think it can be nice that like there is something special about all of us. And what I find interesting that I actually I read some reviews, someone said that it's tedious that the life of an ordinary 18-year-old at least has interest because they live have through time changes that the reader has not. But someone in their 20s, he's just suggesting that someone in their 20s doesn't have like <laughs> interesting life, which as someone in his 20s, <laughs> I would dare to disagree. I think my life isn't that boring, but like, <laughs> okay, uh, I, I understand like the deep inside, but like, no, I think you can have an interesting life in your teens and some teens have more interesting life than 80 year old. Uh, never mind. Anyway, uh, also I like this review. Why are you think about the nature of biographies with example? Why are biographies written in bi biological order? Isn't it way more natural to explore the subject's life as you would in real life, gradually getting to know someone? This is how he chooses to approach Isabel's story. The idea to use Proustian association to uncover childhood experiences instead of asking someone to recount what happened then and then is a very good. So I think it can be like really interesting, like a new way for biographies as, as someone who loves to read about biographies, I think this can be interesting. So I, I will put it for five, wait for me because like I read some of the reviews, it isn't that well, uh, the reviews aren't that good, but I would still like to read it one day, but like it still is wait for me. How Bruce Can Change Your Life, the book Alan wrote in 1997 and it has 200 and eight pages. And if you want to get insight from Proust but you don't really want to read Proust's work because that would take you forever, <laughs> I highly recommend this book. I think it's a brilliant book to read. I even made a whole video about the book if you are interested. And the book reveals Proust's thoughts on how to revive a relationship, choose a good doctor, enjoy a holiday, make friends, respond to insults and so on. And this book I'm adding to card because, well, I already did. And yeah, it's a brilliant book. I really love it. Um, I highly recommend to, to read it. Consolation of Philosophy, 265 pages uh, written in, in the year 2000. And I think like this so far is my favorite book from Alain de Botton. Like I would probably, I would like, so it's obviously it's the adding to cards. It's not the first book I would recommend. It's actually the second book I would recommend. I will get to the first book I would recommend, but like this is the second. And Socrates, Epicurus, Seneca, Montaigne, Schopenhauer and Nietzsche are read for the lighter work and shine on certain great universal problems. The book is divided in the different chapters and the, the, it's, it's the consolation of philosophy, so consolation for unpopularity, not having enough money, frustration, inadequacy, a broken heart, difficulties. And basically they are like the merge of all the, the philosophers and it's merged into like these chapters and these problems and it's like taking their different point of views and it's a brilliant book. I love this book so much. I've already read it three times. I will read it for more times, more more times more <laughs> and uh, yeah I, I really recommend it I think it's like my second book I would recommend from Alan we will get through the number one this is the number two I would read and yeah like definitely give this book a try it, it's a brilliant book and it's the number one book I would recommend anyone who's like want to get into philosophy I would recommend them this book like because it's like it, it's the the philosophy is so accessible for accessible for everyone. The Art of Travel, written in 2002, with 272 pages. Few things are as exciting as the idea of traveling somewhere else, but the reality of travel sort of matches our daydreams. The tragic comic disappointments are well known. The deserts, disorientation, the mid-afternoon despair, the lethargy before ancient ruins, and yet the reason behind such disappointments are rarely explored. I think this book sounds super exciting. As someone who traveled quite a lot in my life, I definitely noticed this kind of like discrepancy between the, the expectations you have and the, the actual reality of it. And then you feel kind of bad because you should be enjoying, you know, like all the traveling, but you maybe aren't that enjoy, enjoying it that much as you should. And you feel absolutely terrible about it. So I think like having someone 
telling you that it's like completely normal experience could be like really nice and refreshing what i think can be a bit off-putting and this is like about all of his book i think uh alan was kind of born with the silver spoon uh if i remember it right though he like he gave up the money but still he probably didn't have to like suffer much in his like life for 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 money and stuff so um, and there's like the, a lot of the comments saying in like various of his books that to, to kind of like relate to him to rich white middle class men can be kind of hard and I'll read you the comment that I, I really like but I struggle to connect with the book the style of travel the bottom described is really the art of white upper middle class um, travel it is tourism it is resorts group tours and friends homes with with pain à chocolat, and he doesn't reflect critically on that. This can be a bad thing about this book, but I would definitely like to read this book one day. Another of his books, Status and Anxiety, 2004, 306 pages. This is a book about an almost universal anxiety that really gets mentioned directly. An anxiety about what others think of us, whether we are judged a success or a failure, a winner or a loser. This book is about such as anxiety. So probably like some kind of intellectual war <laughs> going on. What seems to me is that he probably like skipped some of the philosopher or something, so intentional intellectual blindness and that he didn't cover all the points. But like for me, I think even if he, sorry, if it's not coherence, like if there is some parts of the recent research about serious anxiety skipped, I don't really care. And if he is taking the inspiration from someone else, I don't care either because it's for me, it's like I want the simplified version of what someone else said, that's why I'm reading Alain de Botton. So um, I'm putting this book into uh, adding to cards, but, but it's interesting to know the, about the intellectual, what, uh, what's going on between them. Lucky for me, I'm not the <laughs> intellectual, so I don't have to care about this. <laughs> so another book, The Architecture of Happiness, written in 2006. 280 pages and I think this book is by the way the great gift for someone who's studying about architecture or who is working as an architect. Uh, one of the great but often unmentioned causes of both happiness and misery is the quality of our environment, the kind of walls, chairs, buildings and streets we are surrounded by. So the book is about the impact of the architecture on our day everyday life. And for me, this book is... <laughs> wait for me. Getting back to the comment, I'm living, you know, my deeply uninteresting life in my 20s. With, uh, and I focus more on the relationship level. But I think once I'm on the different level, I'm buying home, I'm decorating home. Um, I think I will like to read this book. The Pleasures and Sorrows of Work, 2009, 336 pages. We spend much of our lives at work, but surprisingly little gets written about what makes work both one of the most exciting and most painful of all activities. I love to work, I love being productive, so I thought this would be like automatically like adding to cart for me, but I'm a masochist, <laughs> so I have, to write the com I have to read the comments, which, um, well, people don't, don't seem to be really liking this one. There are like three main points. First one, again, like the, the, bot the Alan is like coming from the silver spoon background, and so like the, then to be writing about work can be a bit like you know problematic second thing is that there there isn't enough voice there was repeated quite a lot of time by, by the way added people don't have much voice that like alan is like talking his like talk and even though that he interviewed a lot of people and did a lot of research it feels like one-sided or i don't know it did, that not enough voice there and the third point is that he's over glamorizing the basic things but i think that's exactly the point of alan de Botton's books you know that he is like He's making us think about the regular things. The book is written, I dare say overwritten and simply painful so. In what we might call encyclopedic mindfulness, that is the author, attempts to catalog every possible detail, to draw attention to the detail, to the life and energy in the mundane, to make the little things we gloss over after see seeing them a thousand times seem fresh and new again. But like that's exactly the point uh, of Alan de Botton's book. And I think that's also the point of philosophy and what was that? I think it was Orwell who said that the, the best writers were Dostoevsky, I think it was Orwell, who said that the, um, the, the good writers are the ones that write about the things that we already know, but we didn't, but we couldn't put them into words. So I don't really think that's a, that's a bad thing, but like, anyway, I'm putting this book to uh, hesitant to add 
to, about editing the card just because I read the reviews, I was influenced by the negative reviews. The next book, A Week at the Airport, a hetero diary written in 2009, 112 pages, so very short read. I think it's one. I think it's a sign of a really good book. That it only that it takes it is the title, and you are like, yes, I want to buy this one. Uh, so adding to cart for me, I think it's gonna be really interesting. I think, for example, Lucifer Effect has the has a really good name, as does Type of Mentors or Tools of Titans. I think these are also like great names. In the summer of 2009, Alan de Botton was given unprecedented unrestricted access to wander around Heathrow, one of the world's biggest airports, having been appointed its writer in residence. He spoke with everyone from air airline staff and senior executive to travelers passing through, and based on this conversation, he produces this extraordinary account of life at an airport and what it says about modern ex And I kind of hope to be more like the movie, the terminal, I guess. <laughs> and when I look at on Goodreads, I think more people, because the rating isn't that good, probably more people thought that uh, <laughs> it's going to be like the terminal and it wasn't. By the way, something when I was like reading the reviews, some of the reviews are, I think, longer than the book itself. I mean, like, if you like the book, just like write it in few sentences. If you didn't like the book, you know, like, I don't know, like, don't write the whole paragraphs, but like it's okay. Like my form of medium is video. For someone, the form of medium is more like written form. Like I mean, like for me also because I'm a reader, right? But like, but like for me, this is adding a to card. I think it's gonna be really interesting. It's very short, so I think it's going to be really readable. Religion for atheist, a non-believer's guide to the user of religion, 2012, 320 pages. And basically, Alan looks at the religion and what we can say as what we can learn as atheists from it. And these are the things, for example, build a sense of a community, make a relationship last, overcome feeling of envy and inadequacy, escape the 24 hour media, go traveling, get more out of art, and create new businesses, and so on. And again, I made the mistakes of reading the reviews. There was a lot of a lot of time they were mentioned that he was making illogical leaps in his books. For example, uh, the structure of each chapter of the book is very formalistic. Identify a positive aspect of religion, most that this is lacking in modern society, propose a secular solution. And the majority of this argument collapses at stage B, for example. Churches get stronger, stay talking uh, to another. Restaurants don't set up new restaurants. Or the church guides arms on practical life skills. Universities teach fact-based course like history with little regard to life for life skills, change university curriculum, and so on. So for me, this is hesitant about adding to card because I think it's like interesting topic, but it's also like I'm atheist as well. And for me, it's just like it's not something that I would like to be currently dealing with. So when I think about it, it's probably wait for me. <laughs> so this is going to be wait for me book. Uh, so another book, How to Think More About Sex, 2012, 145 pages, again, very short book. And I also wonder if he has a book, How Not to Think More About Sex. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Uh, so the book doesn't really have a high score, but uh, Ali Abdal, one of my favorite YouTubers, recommended. And that's, to be honest, it's like all review I need it. <laughs> if Ali Abdel is recommending it, I'm buying it. Adding to cart. Let's move to another book. Art as a Therapy, 2013, 1240 pages. And this book finally has quite nice reviews. Good. <laughs> and in this book, the Alan de Botton with art historian joined Armstrong, proposed a new way of looking at art, suggesting that it can be useful, relevant, and above all said, therapeutic for its audiences. And that's what I really like about Alan de Botton's book, that he is kind of like teaching us, on because he has so, so much background in philosophy, so he's teaching us how to look at things like art, for example, or religion and how we can like to change our views of them to take like the positive aspects of it so i think that this is like will try to change your way of how to look on art and how you can learn from it which i think it's like really interesting and adding to card for me <laughs> because i think this book has mindset changing potential so i up for that and we have two more books to go and one book is the news written in 2014 with 272 pages. And I think this book can be really interesting because uh, he takes 25 archa 
multiple news stories from an air crash to murder, a celebrity interview to a political scandal and submit them to unusually intense analysis. So I think this book will try to like educate us on the news, like the, the different archetypes, which I think is super interesting. And it's not something that I'm currently that interested. So for me, it's uh, I think hesitant about adding to car, but I would like to read it because especially because I uh, would also like to write one day. I think to know like the archetypal type of stories, it's a good thing to know. So yeah, I think no, I'm hesitant about adding to car, but I will definitely read it one day. And the last book and the book I think I would recommend everyone to read as a first book. It's The Curse of Love, written in 2016 with 240 pages. Most read and popular book. And what I think is interesting is that after this book, he doesn't really write more books. Maybe it's because he then became a bit controversial. There was like some scandals with him. And uh, maybe he got kind of discouraged. Maybe he just like chose a different medium of like educating people, like with YouTube channel. And maybe he you know, like, got discouraged from the bad reviews for, like, I think it's a lot of work and pains to, that you put into one book, so maybe he got discouraged, but so so he's now, like, focusing more on video, but, like, who knows? And again, this book is following a couple who is falling in love, and, but, like, what I think is interesting about this book is that it's focused on, like, mm, let me just, like, find it. The love is, in essence, a skill we need to learn, rather than an enthusiasm we simply experience. So I think it's like a really great thing, because like when you look at love and you look at all the emotions that it's like, uh, that it's, you know, like dealing with, I think it's like super interesting. And so this is like the first book I would recommend everyone to read. The second is The Consolation of Philosophy. And the third one, because I can speak only from my personal experience, is the prose can change your life or essays in love. I actually haven't read The Curse of Love yet, the last book, so it's adding to cart, uh, but I read like very positive reviews and it's his most popular and famous book, so I would read that one as first. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please write me in the comments which of the Alan de Botton's books have you read. Thank you for watching and have a great day.